The next session is on uh, comprehensive, comprehensive ophthalmology. Um, do we have the speakers? Vipin Rana, Dr. Vipin Rana, Dr. Ravi Ranjan, Dr. Hemant Ramachandar, Dr. Lipi Chakravarti, Dr. Monalisa Mahapatra, Dr. Ajay Shankar Kar, Dr. Kamal Sani, Dr. Atul Hirat. Do we have the speakers? Any speaker present? First I will call for the keynote address. Uh, and then the speakers, I can see Dr. Ravi Ranjan here. Uh, then uh, the speakers, please contact me so that we can uh, continue the session. Uh, the convener, Dr. Jagdish Rana, is here. Chairperson, Dr. N. Lakshmi Chaudhary, is here. Please come in and take uh, the chair task. Co-convener Mahesh Kumar Sumani is here. If present, please come. And uh, myself is co-chair person, Dr. Pradeep Kumar Mohanta. So, please start the keynote address.
uh, excellent presentation, uh, Doctor. Any questions from the audience? I wish when I was a resident I could have these models. <laughs> okay, let, let us go for presentations. Is Dr. Deepin Rana present here? Dr. Deepin Rana, please come. Next is Dr. Ravi Ranjan, please be ready.
operative corrective result measure activity improved significantly after one month of surgery, which was statistically significant with a P value less than 0.001. And the BCDA at the final follow up visit was also statistically significant with a P value equals to 0.016. The number of patients with severe vision impairment and blind patient number before, uh, reduced after surgical intervention. Before surgery, 42.9% uh, of patients, they had severe vision impairment. They, they have blindness before surgery. And this number reduced to 19% after surgery for severe vision impairment. And blind patient number began zero after surgical intervention. When we compare our study with others, then we found that the mean age of surgery at our study was a delayed presentation with a shorter follow-up period. We conducted only interventricular lens aspiration and PPL, while other studies, they, uh, they had done lens aspiration, FICO aspiration and ICC procedures as well. We implanted only SFIR, while other studies, they implanted iris resected IOL, SCIOL and uh, PCIOL along with SFIR. We did not encounter any intra-operative or post-operative complication in our study population, while other studies they encountered intra- and post-operative complications. The BCDA in our study population improved significantly after surgery, and this finding uh, was similar with the other study finding. So to conclude, despite of having delayed AR surgical intervention and shorter follow-up period, we noticed a significant improvement of BCDA after surgery which was statistically significant and also we noticed a significant reduction in the severe vision impairment patient number and blind patient number after surgical intervention. Thank you. Which kind of IOL do you use in your study? SFIL, sir. SFIL is which model? Uh, so, tell you of thermology. Then slit lamp examination, if you keep it aside, you can do your regular slit lamp enter segment examination. And uh, with this help, uh, you can take fundus photography also. So it's a quick for documentation and follow up of the patient and uh, education, uh, patient education. So uh, we have our cross-sectional study to evaluate this DIY iFace. We included unilateral or bilateral visual symptom patient uh, having flashes and floaters or metamorphopsia with diminution of vision. Diabetic and hypertensive patients were also included, plus uh, the patients who have been sent by medical specialists for fundoscopy were also included. We excluded the patient uh, having media opacities or active ocular infection. So we evaluated uh, uh, retinal pathologies uh, before and after DIY uh, uh, this innovation. And this is, this is the picture while taking photographs of the patient. So this is, this is a retinal uh, photography video. And these are two cases. One is a dry age-rated macular degeneration. And other one is a traumatic macular hole. So you can ask the patient to move his eyes and you can scan different quadrants of the eye. You can ask the patient to move his eyes towards the quadrant which you want to scan and you can capture that. So these were the cases uh, which we came across, CRVO, then uh, post-PRP, then uh, uh, retinal, de uh, retinal detachment, uh, rigmatogenous retinal detachment, then CRVO, BRVO, tractional retinal detachment, advanced diabetic retinopathy, as well as uh, uh, scarred CNVM. So we evaluated uh, before and after DIY, uh, three months before the device and three months after the device, and we came to know that uh, patients with diabetic PDR Patients with ARMD, CRVO, retinal detachment, macular hole and coloboma, macular dystrophies, CSR, retinitis pigmentosa, and discadema patients were drastically reduced. We evaluated 4,726 patients. Out of them, 279 were, uh, had retinal pathology. So 150 prior, uh, 150 were th three months before the DIY. Out of them, 56 were transferred. 
and next six, uh, next three months, 129 patients were evaluated, uh, were evaluated, and only 18 were transferred. So p-value was 0 0.00, and correlation coefficient is 0 0.955 by SPSS version 23. So 62% were uh, uh, managed by us at the center itself before DIY and 86.07% patient managed at our center after DIY. So there is a reduction of uh, referrals by 23.38%. It's a highly significant. So smartphone imaging has emerged as a useful clinical, uh, useful clinical tool for screening. Its cost is around 650, excluding uh, lens and smartphone, of course. Affordable, treasure to trash material, extremely cheap and can be mounted on any slit lamp, literally any slit lamp like let it be Appa Swami or Zayas or Hack Street or Excel, any slit lamp. So these are, these are the material to prepare the assembly. Photography can be taken which can be shared by teleophthalmology. Eight, only 18 patients we send for further uh, retinal consultation for like VR surgery, injections or PRPs. So video consultation can be done uh, uh, with this help. So take home message is DIY IFIS is a low cost, speedy, convenient and portable device. It brings paradigm shift in screening of retinal pathologies, timely intervention by retinal, uh, retinal specialists. And this touch millions of lives and definitely in, in accessible areas without any financial burden and can tremendously decrease unnecessary retina referral to the higher center. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you said this slit lamp mounted fundus so imaging system. These are few system. videos, sir. It costs only six. These are few videos of uh, these things, sir. Okay, is it ready made? Can anybody purchase this? this Pardon, sir. This uh, mounted uh, uh, slit lamp mounted mounting uh, fundus sir, imaging sir. system. How much it cost? Six fifty rupees. So six fifty rupees apart from the lens and of course smartphone. Yes. So is it uh, is it available where from where one can buy this? Sir, uh, we can prepare it by ourselves. Plus, uh, it it just it just required a sanitizer bottle and one iron molded pl uh, plate and one screw num with number ten. It universally yes, it is, it fits can in be any done slit lamp. Easily, but at its uh, hinge joint. Uh, some uh, it has to be prepared and sold. Otherwise, uh, nobody will take that initiative to make it. Sir, 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 sir. I'll I'll think about it. Yes. Sir. In the next. Okay. Thank you very much. Pardon. Any shadows? Yeah. That that shadow is because of the lens scratches, ma'am. Uh, I will I will. 20D uh, condensed. So that is the inherent uh, issue slightly, which can be more, uh, which can be tackled. Uh, I'm uh, on it, sir. To uh, Dr. Kamal Sani, please come. Par yes. Dr. Kamal Sani, please come to the dais. 20D and. Twenty D sir. But it can be snugly fitted by uh, in the plastic bottle, sir. I have, uh, practically I have used that, sir. You can take this mic and Okay, ocular manifestations in happy gesture of Thalmikus, Dr. Kamal Soni. Uh, please start. Dr. Komal. Good afternoon, everyone. My study is to, uh, to study ocular manifestation in herpes gesture of Thalmikus. There is no financial disclosure. Uh, herpes zoster is commonly encountered disorder in primary care. Infection with varicella zoster virus, a neurodermotropic virus causes a varicella, a disease that manifests as a disseminated vascular body rash. After that, virus remains latent in sensory ganglia for decades. The virus reacted in dorsal root ganglia and retrograde migration in the sensory axon of the skin to form painful vascular eruption. 
herpes zoster ophthalmicus occurs when reactivation of the latent virus in the trigeminal ganglia involves the ophthalmic division of the nerve and it is unilateral in nature. The virus damages the eye and the surrounding structure by secondary perineural and intraneural inflammation of the sensory nerve. Decreased cellular immunity, advancing age, immunosuppressive medication, and primary infection with herpes zoster virus in infancy have found to increase risk of herpes zoster ophthalmicus. Herpes zoster ophthalmicus account for 10 to 20 percent of herpes zoster cases. The ocular manifestation of uh, herpes zoster ophthalmicus include blepharitis, conjunctivitis, episcleritis, scleritis, epithelial keratitis, stromal and endothelial keratitis, sometimes orbital cellulitis, acute and post herpactic neuralgia, uveitis, glaucoma, and optic neuritis. Herpes zoster ophthalmicus associated uveitis is usually associated with high intraocular pressure. Classical involvement of the tip of the nose, that is Hutchinson sign, has been found uh, has been found thought to be clinical predictor of ocular involvement. Although patient with positive Hutchinson sign have the twice incidence of ocular involvement. Reactivation causes necrosis and inflammation in the sensory ganglia, causing corneal anesthesia that result in neurotropic keratopathy. Post herpetic neuralgia is the most important and troublesome complication. My aim is to determine the spectrum of ocular manifestation in patient with zoster ophthalmicus. This is a prospective hospital-based study including all patients with herpes zoster who are present to the Department of Ophthalmology in our tertiary care center, Jharkhand. Inclusion criteria, all patients with herpes zoster ophthalmicus during study of 8 months were included. Examination include external inspection, visual acuity, visual field, extraocular involvement, pupillary responses, uh, fundoscopy, intraocular pressure, anti-air chamber, slit lime examination, corneal examination. These are my results in which sex distribution of the study groups of male well 17, female well 13. Uh, these are the uh, pictures which I have found in my study group. These are the age distribution of the study group in which 41 to 50 years old have most common findings. In, these are my laterality in which left is more common than right but is not statistically significant. These are the predisposing factor in my study group. HIV patients, uh, number of patients were 7, diabetic mellitus 8, age group greater than 60 years or 4. These are the pie charts showing ocular involvement in my study group. My conclusion is that 30 patients, of which 17 male and 13 female were examined, of which patients were, uh, may our, may 64 patients were above the age of 40 years. 78% of uh, patients had some form of ocular involvement in which pain was a commonest ocular complaint. In HIV, young, in young patient, HIV was the most common risk factor. Visual study was found to be, uh, found were good in majority of the patient. Lead at next time, 45% of most common ocular involvement followed by conjunctivitis, corneal complication, uveitis, and post herpetic neuralgia, secondary glaucoma in is 58%. My discussion of the topic is the age is the most common uh, predisposing factor, a peak incidence seen in younger age group, the two phase in life uh, in which infection is most likely under the 14 years and above 40 years. The rare occurrence in infant and children is due to generally accepted fact that the varicella zoster in children causes varicella and gives some immunity, incidence slightly more in male than female. The most common predisposing condition in diabetes mellitus, which was seen in 26% of the phasor. In this case, conjunctivity was seen in 41 patient, corneal involvement 36, uvia 19%, secondary glaucoma and post herpetinuralgia. These are my, in our study, the positive Hutchinson sign correlates significantly with the ocular manifestation of conjunctivitis, keratitis and uveitis. Hence, the presence of Hutchinson sign is a good indicator of occurrence of the com ocular complication. These are my references. Thank you. November to June. Eight months. Eight months study. Okay. So what else you have given the treatment? Ma'am, oral, some, in some patient we have got oral assignment, but patient with post herpetic neuralgia we have got cold compression or uh, ointment, uh, analgesics. Hutchison's tri triad is Hachisen's there, IE involvement for uh, yes, ocular, uh, what you advised, mm -hmm. ocular uh, symptoms, so huh. what you advised. I mean, what is the general with acyclical ointment? Only, only no. ointment. No, ma'am, soft drop, means, uh, lubricating eye drop we have given. So there is no any iritis, iridocyclitis. Mm -hmm. For your cases, uh, mm -hmm. do you see any eye involvement like congestion, iritis, iridocyclitis? Mm -hmm. We have seen conjunctivitis in the patient. I will blab to blab. So cornea is not involved. Uh, ma'am, punctured epithelial keratitis I have seen it. Okay. Okay.
Any other speaker in this session? Yeah. You are the speaker? Your name? No, please come. Uh, what's your name? It is in the same session, comprehensive ophthalmology. Okay, please continue. Uh, good afternoon, one and all. I'll be discussing about the analysis of Im imaging techniques in early detection of HCQ retinopathy. There's no financial disclosure in this presentation. Introduction. Hydroxychloroquine is an anti-malarial medication that has in recent times been utilized as a treatment for a variety of autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis and systemic lupus erythematosus and inflammatory and dermatologic conditions. In early stages of HCQ retinopathy, patients are usually asymptomatic with preservation of visual equity. When allowed to advance, HCQ retinopathy leads to significant deterioration in visual equity, peripheral vision and night vision. The classic bullseye maculopathy of HCQ retinopathy characterized by peripheral ring of retinal pigment epithelium atrophy that spares the fovea is a late finding suggestive of advanced and usually irreversible damage. Therefore, the screening of asymptomatic patients with clinical and fundus examination alone is not sufficient. This must be done in conjunction with multimodal imaging to detect early evidence of HCQ retinopathy. The aim of this study was to analyze the role of imaging techniques like spectral domain optical coherence tomography and OCT angio in the early detection of HCQ retinopathy. This was a prospective case control type of analytical study uh, done in a tertiary care hospital in Chennai for a period of one year. The sample size we selected was uh, cases of 25 patients with 50 eyes and controlled 25 patients. The inclusion criteria for this was the cases all patients above the age of 18 years who were on HCQs with no deterioration of visual acuity and changes of HCQ retinopathy on fundus and control were all patients above 18 years of age who were not on HCQs. The exclusion criteria was uh, patients below 18 years of age, patients with pre-existing retinopathy due to other causes and patients not willing for imaging modalities. Uh, after enrollment, a complete uh, routine ophthalmological examination by a uh, trained ophthalmologist was performed. We first divided the patients into two groups as control and treatments. Then we further divided the treatment group into two subgroups based on the uh, duration of HCQ use. We anal the parameters we analyzed were the uh, macular ganglion cell complex, complex thickness, photoreceptor layer integrity and the retinal vasculature, especially that of the choriocapillaries. These were the OCT findings of some of our patients. Uh, the results on analysis of OCTA were that all the vascular parameters were similar between the study and the treatment groups. However, the superficial hole thickness, superficial parafoveal thickness, superficial perifoveal thickness, deep hole thickness, deep parafoveal thickness, and deep perifoveal thickness were lower in the treatment group than in the control group. The choriocapillaries flow area, superficial hole density, and the superficial perifoveal density values were different between patients who were under HCQ treatment for less than five years and greater than five years. In patients with chronic HCQ exposure, they found a selective thinning of the ganglion cell layer and inner plexiform layer without any structural changes to the outer layers, outer retinal layers and the RPE as noticed on the OCT. Also the superficial hole thickness, superficial parafoveal thickness, superficial perifoveal deep hole thickness, deep parafoveal thickness and the deep perifoveal thickness were lower in patients who were under HCQ treatment for greater than five years than in those who were on HCQ treatment for less than five years. Uh, a similar study, uh, similar to ours, was conducted uh, on evaluation of optic OCT uh, angio parameters in patients treated with HCQ by Mohamed Dereza, which showed similar results where the uh, superficial foveal thickness and other parameters were lower in the treatment group than in the control group. Uh, conclusion, in conclusion, our results indicated a decrease in the su uh, superficial capillary plexus at the parafoveal and perifoveal regions in patients who were receiving HCQ treatment for greater than five years.
the octa imaging may be may thus be beneficial in indirectly in early detection of hcq toxicity which is mainly located in the inner retinal layer such as ganglion cells the oct findings in retina can identify early hcq retinopathy and may play a role as a complementary objective tool in hcq maculopathy screening which uh, vascular density parameters did not differ much between the control and treatment groups however the retinal thickness values were lower in the treatment group thank you thank you very nice presentation any other speaker present in this please come please come What's your name name Chaitanya and Kim. Okay. Any other speaker present? Ramya. Okay. Good evening, everyone. So uh, today I'm going to talk on surgical synergy. Uh, this is a um, taken in the OT setup, so I needed to play the video as well with a voiceover. get the audio Headphones. Okay, headphones only. Yes, headphones, headphones. Yeah. Only, only headphones. Sure, okay. Okay, we we'll restart the reset. Oh, I will. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, sir. Ah, oh, okay. I think it's coming. Okay. Alexa, 
start theater. Okay. So with just one voice command, you can switch on the lights, your microscope, and then your TV, and then your video recorder up there. Here I am simulating the surgical scenario. Here is the view with, through our 4K surgical camera. So now I'll just uh, demonstrate a demo video of how uh, the surgical procedure takes place. So this is a this is a dummy patient, and we are just so now suppose I am in the first step where I have done the draping and all, and now I wanted to start the surgery. So what I do is I adjust my fine focus, I adjust the microscope and I just say like Alexa, turn off backlight okay. So this uh, cuts down the glare for me And now I started my surgery and everything, I was doing it and then I come to the point of where I want to do rexes So I do say like Alexa, turn off retro illumination okay. And I want to start my surgical video recording without anyone's help. So I just give a voice command like Alexa, start recording. Okay. Alexa, stop recording. Okay. someone to get something from outside like an unstyled thing probably someone to get a new saline bottle so now you can do with with the voice command see how I give you the voice command Alexa turn on bell okay suppose you are in the surgery and now you want to control your FACO mission you can do it with voice controls through Alexa or Google or Siri so the thing is if there is any problem with your foot pedal suddenly the mode stopped working then you can do it with voice control Alexa next mode ok Alexa next mode ok Alexa previous mode Okay. Alexa, next mode. Okay. So, suppose you want to change some certain parameters in the fact machine while you're operating, you can do it with just a voice command. So, you can say, like, Alexa, increase bottle height. Okay. Alexa, decrease bottle height. Okay. You can even say like Alexa decrease power. Okay. You can say like Alexa decrease vacuum. Okay. Alexa increase vacuum. Okay. Alexa decrease aspiration. Okay. Alexa, increase aspiration. Okay. Alexa, change grade. Okay. Alexa, change grade. Okay. So that's how you can operate your machine. So now, once you are ready, so I will demonstrate you. Alexa, stop the air. Okay. can customize the whole theater as per each doctor's desired settings. Slides. Over. Yeah, just slides, just two slides are there. So, so uh, this the first thing is like it's uh, fully customizable. Like for any OT setup of yours, mine is a very old OT setup. So I completely customized it as per my old switches and modules and everything. So it's completely customized with uh, any FACO machine which has a remote control. 
all it needs is a remote control. As of now, IR uh, remote controls work pretty good. And I, I usually do this on my surgery also, on the patients also, but in my, I'm afraid to keep a video here. But I do it on the surgery also, it works flawlessly. And these are the devices which uh, we use, like the home extension socket and the four node sockets and the broad link. This is the most important one, the RM4 Pro. This works amazingly for everything. Like you can control your AC, your temperature, even like you can fix the set climate temperature and whenever it drops below, it, it uh, automatically adjusts it to that temperature. So there's no problem to the thing. This is the FACO machine that we use and this is the recorder which again is programmable for the automation. So there is not even a single, uh, single switch or single button that anyone needs to touch in the entire OT. You can do it completely with your voice recognition and surgeon because uh, the major problem came with uh, FACO machine when operating it, the surgeon knows exactly what parameters should be altered while doing the surgery. And uh, a lot of untrained staff will be coming every now and then into roti. Someone will pop in and they try to fiddle up with the machine. So it's uh, this one gives you a lot of peace. Like it precisely decreases or increases and everything is completely customizable. Like you want to uh, set it to like 5 or 10 or decrease or increase or change it by 20, whatever it is like. So this is the steps like how you can do it. Uh, it's uh, like you need to set the smart things first and then uh, create the routines or the program it in the mobile app application. Everything is mobile application based like. So it, the whole setup will cost you like 5,000 to 6,000. Okay, so good. Uh, uh, if you have a trained staff, uh, Will it be faster with this or by the trained stuff to change the modes? Faster with this. Faster with this? Faster with this. Like multiple commands can be done with this. Like you can, uh, suppose like we want to change the grade and again decrease the vacuum also, we can program that also. Like Suppose you uh, want to, you are saying a decrease vacuum. Yeah. So can you say uh, decrease vacuum to 200? From 400, that, that is, there is everything is customizable. Like you can give already feed the command, decrease vacuum to 200 prefix. So when you are operating, you can use that command, or you can use the regular decrease vacuum decreases like how much you want to decrease. Like if you, if you want to decrease like 5 5 or 10 10 or 20 20 or 25 25, it's up to you. You can prefix it. But if you want to say like decrease to 200, obviously you can set it that way. It all is like completely programmable. Like imagination is the end to this thing. Okay, uh, is this the original uh, paper uh, in India on this subject or uh, like surgical synergy or somebody has done it earlier before mm, you? No one has done it anywhere. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Ramia, please come. Good afternoon, delegates on the dais and off the dais. I'm Dr. Ramya. Topic is a clinical study on correlation between central corneal thickness and degree of myopia. So, uh, coming to the background, global burden of both myopia and glaucoma have increased rampantly in the de recent times and the undetected glaucoma cases have many factors to consider out of which underestimation of intraocular pressure in thin corneas is often overlooked, so which is seen in high myopes, that is the main perspective. Several studies that correlated or that try to correlate relationship between central corneal thickness and degree of myopia showed conflicting results. So the main objective is uh, of the present study is to investigate the relationship between central corneal thickness and degree of myopia in patients visiting ophthalm department in Jinsar Institute of Medical Sciences and Research, Vishakapatnam. So coming to methodology, study design, it is a hospital-based analytical observational study. Sample size, uh, patients aged between 10 and 40 years, that is 80 patients and 160 eyes are taken. Study period, 6 months, that is from Feb 2023 to July 2023. All the study participants underwent a comprehensive ophthal examination. Myops were divided into low, moderate and high, that is minus 0 0.5 to my less than minus 3 is low and from minus 3 to minus 6 is moderate and above minus 6 diopters it is high myopia. Central corneal thickness here was measured using anterior segment OCT. 
So inclusion criteria, all the subjects aged between 10 and 40 who have myopia or myopic astigmatism were considered. Exclusion criteria, subjects under 10 and above 40, subjects with history of ocular trauma, refractive surgeries, people with corneal dystrophies, degenerations, keratoconus, subjects using contact lens, uh, people with vernal keratoconjunctivitis, severe dry eye disease, pregnant women, and people with systemic collagen vascular diseases that can have effect on corneal thickness were excluded. Uh, coming to the results, out of 80 subjects and 160 eyes, males were 42.5 percent, females were 57.5 percent. Uh, majority of them are low myopes, that is 53.8 percent. Moderate myopes accounted for 31.3 percent, and high myopes only 15 percent. Uh, standard statistical analysis that was used. Uh, was statistical package for social sciences, Chicago IL version 20.0. Parametric data was represented in means and standard deviation. Non-parametric data was, was expressed in proportions. Statistical tests, tests like ANOVA, Pearson's correlation coefficient were applied. P-value less than 0 0.05 is considered statistically significant. Coming to the distribution of central corneal thickness, mean and central corneal thickness in right eye was 521, and of that of left eye is 519. Uh, distribution of spherical equivalence, the average spherical equival equivalent of right eye was minus 3.5, and that of left eye is minus 3.4. And when we conducted an ANOVA test, p-value was found to be 0 0.031. There is significant negative correlation as depicted by the scatter plot where their central corneal thickness was correlated with spherical equivalent. So as the degree of myopia is increasing, the central corneal thickness was decreasing. So coming to discussion, there were several studies that were conducted to investigate the correlation between degree of myopia and central corneal thickness, but they all showed many conflicting results. So previous studies that produced negative correlation, just like this study were Muthukrishnan V. et al. conducted a prospective study uh, on 156 subjects in 2018 and found negative correlation where p-value is 0.14. Similarly, Michael Nimoni et al. conducted a large study on 30,245 uh, individuals between the years 2000 and 2014 and found negative correlation, p-value less than 0.001. So there are a couple of studies that showed no correlation between central corneal thickness and spherical equivalent, like that uh, Divya K. Atal and Hemakshi Desai. So in conclusion, in the present study, there is negative correlation between degree of myopia and central corneal thickness, because myopes are more prone for glaucoma, and at the same time, high myopes have underestimated intraocular pressure because of the thinned out corneas. So when we are evaluating, we must be cautious of this and IOP must be corrected according to the central corneal thickness. So early diagnosis and early intervention necessary for better visual prognosis. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank nice you. Nice presentation. Uh, doctor, uh, any, any other presenter? Dr. Lipo, okay, fine, then we conclude this session here.